What do we want? Large leaves. And how can we get it? This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hi, I'm Christina from Leafilasta and my absolute dream is to grow plants like this. Mad respect to Jan from Sydney Plant Guy. His plants are beyond beautiful. My reality, on the other hand, looks a little bit more like this. Bruh. I just use chopsticks, little skewers, or just bamboo poles or wooden poles to stake up my plants, which works a little bit. But the leaves also just size up a little bit. One of my goals for 2023 was to grow more mature and beautiful plants. Well, we're already in May and I haven't started yet, so it's not going well. With my current method, that is not really working out. The plant has nothing to grab onto and the leaf size is increasing very slowly, if at all. I bought and built all of the different moss poles, fibers and planks out there so you don't have to. And we are going to test and compare all of them in this very video. Let's go. I got eight different kinds of poles from Etsy, Amazon and other plant shops. I'll try to link them all below and I am not sponsored by any of these. For me there are three, maybe four, or actually it's five different criteria that are important to me in a pole. The price, aesthetic, stability, the effectiveness and also the effort which includes the building, maintenance and watering of the pole. To compare the price I made a little list and I try to get them all in a similar size so I can compare them a little bit better. Now the cheapest would be a bamboo stick. You can get this in any garden center for 75 cents super cheap. Now next up just a simple wooden plank which you can get at any hardware store for up to five euros. I got four of the lazy poles which are these foldable plastic poles for 7.69 with the moss included. An absolute classic is the cocoa pole. You can get this in any garden center. I found some for 13.89 up to 20 euros depending on the size. Next up, we're getting into a more innovative territory, which is self-watering moss poles. We have the one with the PVC pipe inside and a wick inside the moss from Amazon for 21 euros roughly. Tree fern fiber plate. I scoured the internet for this. I couldn't get my hands on it on Amazon, so I found a little plant shop that also sells these planks for 6.50 per plank. Next up, a 3D printed version of a moss pole. It's made out of plastic and you can stack these up. They are not self-watering and I found this on on Etsy or Amazon for 30 euros. Now the most expensive pole that I got is 50 centimeters tall, cost me 30 euro and 99 cents. I found it on Etsy from Grünes Zuhause. And this is also a self-watering pole, but it has a metal pipe inside and three wicks down the bottom to water the moss. I am absolutely aware you can make most of these on your own. You can do a little DIY and probably get it done cheaper. For the purpose of comparison, I bought all of this stuff. To test all of these bad boys, I will need some climbing plants, eight to be precise. Luckily, I have a propagation addiction. And I've prepared a few philodendrons. Splendid! I have more than eight cuttings in here, I think, that are all well rooted, and we can use those as our test subjects. Now I need some water to moisten up the moss and the fiber. I don't actually know what this is. It was included, so I'm going to use it. In the other bowl, I will use some sphagnum moss. Let's start potting. I have some medium sized pots, all the same size. I'm going to use these for every single one of the cuttings. And I'm going to start with the two easiest things, the bamboo stick and the wooden pole. As my, s excuse me. I will also use the same soil for all of these plants. I'm currently using the Cyber Soil Aeroid Mix, which is amazing. I had great success with all of the soil mixes from Cyber Soil. So I will leave a link down below. It's an affiliate link. You can check out the website yourself. I will have to pick a few cuttings that are similar in size, root and growth. These are nice ones. 
Oh, I love Philodendron Splendid. It's such a pretty plant and it's way less stressful than the Melanochrysum. Let's crack into the soil. Two little planties. These have great root systems. What I like about the plank, it has a little bit more stability. The bamboo poles, at least for me, they're always like turning, twisting, and it's really hard to secure them in the pot properly. Moving on. I'm going to go with the lazy pole next and I hope it fits into the pot. Almost a perfect fit. <laughs> we have the first exception already. Fill the whole thing with sphagnum. You could also do it just little by little, dropping it in there, you know? I can really see this working for bigger plants, like really chunky, mature plants. I think it's still thick enough for that. Ta-da! Uh, it's significantly more heavy now. Okay, I'm gonna go with this one. Done with this one. Next up, the coca poles. Let's get on with it. Let's take this little top cutting. Boom, plop on the extension if needed. Moving on to something very exciting. I wanna continue with the tree fern fiber. And I heard so many good things about this, especially if you mix it into your soil, for example. So I thought, why not take it as like a pole and let something climb on top? You can see it's not very sturdy. I will attach one of these poles at the back. There probably is a more elegant way to it, but I'm going to do it like this. Ta-da! My very professional tree fern fiber pole. That's a mouthful. Uh, yeah. Next up, I wanna do the two self-watering moss poles. This one is just like some cheap stuff from Amazon made in China. And then this one on the other hand is handmade by someone on Etsy. It's packed with moss, it's not flaky, and you basically just fill the inside with water and then the moss can wick up water from the pipe. I'm betting on those because listen, I'm a busy woman. I um, don't have time to like spray my moss poles every day. And it's also basically the reason why I haven't really used poles heavily in the past. Two more done, let's get on with the last one. I think it's the last one. The 3D printed moss pole. I really thought it would come with sphagnum moss, but it instead it came with natural fiber. And I think it's some sort of wood fiber. If anything, I can still change it out later on. It's a little bit of a mess because it's like small enough that it falls out of this container again. I hate this. <laughs> Maybe it's the next new cool thing like fluval stratum. Okay, this is the thing. What I really like about this pole is it has three little feet, so I'm pretty sure it will securely stay in the pot. Pop in my little cutting. I really need to clean my hands, oh my goodness. Ta -da! The handling on this one is probably the best. It's nice and sturdy. I like the base that's inside the soil. There's also a lot of room still for the roots of the plant. It's a plus point. I am all done. These are the eight poles I set up. Now they are ready to go into their new home. I needed to shift a few things around, but I decided this would be the perfect space for all of my experiments. I can all give them the same amount of light here. It's a lot of light, maybe too much in the summer. I will have to see. For now, I can only really rank the stability and there are significant differences. My favorite is actually the lazy pole. It holds up so well. Second place, the 3D printed pole and all the other ones are pretty wonky in the pots. It's not great. And now I wanna give the plants a few months to grow and attach to the moss poles. 
While we wait, let me introduce you to Skillshare. And trust me, this is worth sticking around for. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of classes. Of course, I had to check out any plant-related courses first, like those by The Sill or the legendary Plant Queen. But it's not just about plants, they offer courses for every interest, from art to business to writing and so much more. If you're into watercolor painting like me, Skillshare's art classes are an absolute goldmine. I really enjoyed the negative painting masterclass by Anna Bucciarelli. She was painting an Anthurium clarinervium and it turned out great. The fun part is you can start a project right alongside the course and end up with a fantastic piece of art. Whether you want to pick up a new hobby, launch a business or learn how to use AI, Skillshare has got you covered. Plus, they offer a wide range of courses about YouTube and editing, helping me create better videos for you. Now here's the deal. The first 500 people to click my link in the description box will get one of Skillshare's best offers yet. A 30-day free trial and 40% off your first yearly Skillshare membership. If anything, just take advantage of the free trial, check out Skillshare, see what they have to offer and join a community of lifelong learners. Thank you Skillshare, now let's dive right into the review. It is five months later, I'm back with the results. Excited to be here, I'm sorry for my voice, I'm still recovering from a cold. But I want to walk you through my thoughts and ratings. As always, I prepared a table to score each criterion on a scale of 1 to 10. Let's get the plants. Ta-da! Here they are. You can't see me. It went pretty well. We had one fatality. The bamboo pole cutting unfortunately died. But on the other hand, you can see all the differences in the other poles. And I want to go through my criteria one by one. Let's talk about the aesthetic. Either you're okay with the aesthetic of poles or not. I don't mind any of these setups, but I prefer the more natural look of wood, bamboo and cocoa. Next up is stability. Now in my experience, every pole with just one leg will be wonky. Even worse when it's as heavy as this moss pole, for example, really difficult, not very stable at all. The clear winners here are the lazy pole, the three-legged 3D printed pole, and surprisingly the cocoa pole also did great. The next part is the most important part to me personally, which is effectiveness. In other words, how much did the leaf size increase? How well did the plant attach to the pole? And did it make any difference? I don't need any words for this. Just check out all of these plants and tell me you don't see a difference, a clear difference. If you want to increase the size of your leaves quickly, I recommend using the self-watering moss poles or the lazy poles. Although it seems like as long as you provide a sturdy pole of any kind, the foliage will slowly increase in size. Now on to the effort, which includes maintenance and the building process. So none of these poles were difficult to build, some were just ready to use, hence better points. For maintenance, some poles didn't need any watering, such as the plank, tree fern or cocoa pole, which made maintenance extremely low effort. The self-watering poles should have been easy going as well, but the cheap one needed to be refilled more often than I thought, and thus it kept drying out very quickly, which then led to the roots not attaching properly and, well, the plant didn't increase in size as much as I hoped. The lazy pole kept moist fairly long, even though it had no water reservoir. The 3D pole was very hard to keep moist, so I let it dry out most of the times. I also want to talk more about the root attachment. So on this side, we have all of the poles where the plant was able to grab onto the moss or the substrate and really grow roots into it, hence leading to increased foliage size. On this side, the self-watering moss pole was quite a disappointment it just didn't grab on anywhere, nothing at all. I wasn't expecting much anyway, since I cannot keep these plants in a greenhouse, I don't have a cabinet or a grow tent, so I don't have high humidity, which makes it really hard for the plants to truly grab onto it. 
In sum, the winner of the challenge is the Lazy Pole. It just scored best in all of the categories, which is pretty good. But also I want to mention this self-watering moss pole, the more expensive one, was better in fact. And also the 3D pole didn't do quite bad. Now before I share my final thoughts, I would like to know which kind of moss poles you use at home. Do you make them yourself? How do they look and how effective are they? If you use any at all, I would love to know. This experiment was really able to show me that there is no one size fits all if it comes to plants. Everyone has different conditions, a different plant care style or different goals for their plants. Each of these trellises has its pros and cons and it really just depends on what you want from it, what is important to you. Does it have to be cheap? Do you want to increase leaf size? Does it have to be pretty? I'm just here to share my results with you so you can make up your mind on your own. I want to leave you with this video next. I'll see you next time. Until then, enjoy your plants and goodbye.